My name is Jonathan Reeves from Innovative Vector It's Been. Today I'm going to share with you some of my favourite new features from the Vector It's 2020 release that's just come out today. Very exciting. Okay guys, so let's get straight into this and let's talk about some of the exciting new features. The first big new feature is one that you're going to notice right away as soon as you open the new Vector It's 2020. There's some really nice new icons and basically it's kind of like nice to see that the interface has been overhauled and refreshed after a few years. Um, you know, when you first look at it, it takes a little getting used to perhaps, but with a little bit of use, it grows on you quite rapidly. And I think, you know, you can see that the tools are really nice. As you hover over them, you still get the help system. So it's kind of great for learners. I think they're a little bit larger as well, and they seem a bit crisper on high resolution displays. Now, one of the really cool things, though, is the support for, you guessed it, dark mode. So let's have a look at how this works. So at the moment, here we are in light mode. I think Vector is lovely in light mode. However, uh, over the years, many of the users with the Mac Mojave would love to start using it in the full-on dark mode. And as you can see, the icons look absolutely awesome in dark mode. So it's very easy to identify them. Um, when you click on the hover over, as I say, you get the help anyway. Um, do remember that if you're learning Vectorworks, you can also switch across to maybe some of the tool palettes and you can do view as icons and text. And this can be quite helpful, you know, for you guys when you're just starting out with Vectorworks, just to learn the name of the tool. And in brackets is the shortcut. So I do hope you like the new interface. Um, you will see that this reoccurs in quite a lot of the dialogue. So for example, the resource manager, command R, just pop that one open. Um, this is really nice the way they've done this. Again, we've got the browser in black, and you can see the icons still appear in white, but that's cool, with the backgrounds. So depending on what you're looking for, we can open up the browser, have a look at some of the content in here, and you know, you've still got the ability to change the different views. Let's go for the big icon view. I think it looks really smart. And of course, if you're one of those people who likes the black background, all black, then you know, it does look like a very, very different interface from the previous 2019 version in white mode. So I think you'll find that there's a lot of other dialogues that are all kind of being refreshed and overhauled somewhat, but I do hope you enjoy this brand new feature. Um, I'm certainly looking forward to using dark mode a bit more. It's definitely a little bit restful on the eyes at times. I kind of like toggling between the two to be fair, but yeah, hope you enjoy that guys. So, for my next favourite feature, we're going to have a look at some of the 3D improvements in 2020. So, um, as some of you in Vectorworks who've been using 3D for years will know, it's an amazing 3D modeler as well as BIM package. And basically, I just want to show you some of the new features related to what I call the, I suppose, the geomet geometric or SketchUp style of modelling. So, let's just go ahead and use um, a couple of rectangles here. I'm just going to kind of overlap and draw a series of shapes. And basically, I'm just going to select them, right click and add them. Uh, this is something I've done with my workspace. I've basically created an enhanced workspace with loads of additional shortcuts so I can add those together. Let's put that into 3D. So I've just clicked 3 on the numerical keypad. And I'm going to go to Model Extrude. So I'm just going to take that up, let's say 3 meters. OK, cool. So we could have done this with the old version. But these are some of the new features I would like to show you. Previously, when you double click on a shape, you edit the history. So you can go into the history and then pop back out again. That's absolutely fine. However, there were some commands that did block the history. Typically, it was the fillet, the shell, and the chamfer tool. So if I click onto the fillet tool, I'm going to click onto this top edge here, and I'm going to select my radius. It's on a meter at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and click tick. And you can see that we've successfully filleted the top edge of this, uh, this shape here. That's kind of nice. Now I can adjust that afterwards by going up to the object info palette and there's a few new buttons. So highlight, modify and remove. Okay, so let's come back and see, show you how those work. So let's move on to another command. Okay, so normally if I was to go perhaps and hollow this building out, I'd go to the shell and I would click Perhaps use 300 as a shell thickness and I'll click tick. So normally when we create shells or fillets or chamfers, let's go ahead and create a chamfer on this corner. Let's say we turn off all 
faces and we'll just select this face, this face, and this one and this one and I'll click tick. So normally once we've created a chamfer or a fillet, if we double click we can't get back into the history but you'll notice with Vector is 2020 there's nothing to stop us and if I keep double clicking I'm right back where I started. So I can use my reshape tool, modify um, maybe this idea of this building here, come back out, it reapplies the fillet for me and then after that it will reapply the shell. So that's absolutely fantastic. So no longer do we kind of block the history. Um, just sort of punch an opening into that wall. You can see, let's just do another opening into that wall here. So I click four, I'm drawing automatically on the face. I'm just holding down the Alt key. So even though we're inside our project, we can double click. Here's our first step of history. If I would like to, I can modify this and maybe duplicate that along to those sides. Okay, and if I come back out, you see that's done. However, if we double click, double click, double click, I can keep going right back into the history, right back to the original polygon, and I can still make some changes in here. Perhaps I want the fillet tool, um, just a 2D fillet tool, and let's just round off this corner. So when I come back out, you'll see all the different levels of history are available. And uh, if we click, here we go, up in the history, section here. If I go right back out to design layer one, that's absolutely fantastic. All the fillets, um, the subtractions, and the shelling has basically followed through. So a very nice little tip is you will notice that when you double click it back in, when you get to the point where the history is required, you can highlight. Um, so you can actually see what was done on that last stage. And if you do want to, you can remove that stage as well. That's cool. So yeah, I hope you enjoy the new history-based modeling. Um, I promise you Vectorworks is absolutely fantastic for 3D modelling as well as a BIM workflow and I really hope you enjoy that. Thank you. Okay, so for the next few feature I'm going to open up one of my projects and show you um, a 3D model and let's have a look at this project here. So it's about 140 megabytes and basically that's going to open pretty fast. You'll see that there was a dialogue with some feedback when you open the model. And once the rondel is rendered for the very first time, you will notice that with Vector 2020, uh, the speed of the rendering is even faster. Now this is because Vectorworks have worked on the, um, the Vectorworks graphics model level of detail. And this now basically has been re-engineered and improved in terms of its performance, not only on the 2D side, but on the 3D side. So you will notice that even quite complex models, models are super fast in terms of being manipulated. The view change is nice and smooth and slick. And again, if you look around in 2D, you'll see that the panning and everything else in 2D has been improved a lot. So that combined with the VGM improvements on the sheet layers that we had last year will really speed up your working with big, big files and big models, which is important actually, as soon as things get into, you know, um, more complex BIM type models. Okay. So the feature that I wanted to show you is animation. So what I'm going to do is basically have a look at my model and I'm going to go to model, walk through animation. To begin with, I'm just going to create an orbit path. So when we click OK, we have a few different options. Um, let's go for a full 360 and I won't take off on because I want that in perspective. And basically you'll notice that Vectorwiz has now generated a path with a camera. So there it is in 2D and 3D. If I click play, you'll notice the camera moving around the path. And if I want to, I can also activate the camera view and click play as well. So this is really, really nice in terms of sort of basically enabling me to kind of quickly preview a little animation. Now I can also change things like the timeline. Okay, so I can scroll through to different aspects of the timeline. I can slow things down or speed it up. Um, so depending on the speed I would like, it's very easy to adjust. And I can even add more keyframes, and I can display those keyframes if I like as well. So there's quite a lot you can do. Now when you're ready, you can click Create Movie, and we've got some nice settings in here. So I'm just going to render in OpenGL because it's nice and fast. I'll keep it quick. I'll go to Settings. You can see all the settings are available for me. And I'm just going to go ahead and render you can see right up to 4K, but no need to do that right now. Let's just keep it quite low resolution. 
Another cool feature is we can process on the Vectorworks Cloud if we're uh, Vectorworks Service Lab members, and we've got the quality settings here. So I'm going to process locally, I'm going to click Save, and let's just save that to my presentation folder. Now that'll take a few moments. Let's go ahead, you can see it's going to whiz through fairly rapidly the frames, and I'll come back in a moment when the animation's done and we'll show you how that looks. That's how simple and easy it is to create an orbit-based animation. Okay, so one of the other really nice things about the animation is here I've got some save views in my file and you can see I can kind of skip to the save views. I've also got a new search dialog for those. So it's kind of nice I can skip to those individually. And um, that's really great when you're sort of presenting to a client. However, it would be nice to easily do an animation and this was a bit awkward before in previous Vectorworks. So now we have create walkthrough path from save views. So what we can do is we can go ahead and basically send the views across that we would like to use. So let's do, I'm just going to do a little sequence here, that one to that one, I think will work quite well. So I'm going to click send them across. I can reorder them. I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to again activate the camera view. And I'm going to play. Now it might go quite fast because I probably haven't got enough keyframes, but you can see, you know, as a really easy way to walk through the building, that's absolutely fantastic. So I'm very happy. I'm going to go and create the movie. Um, I think I'm going to add a few more frames. So let's say 30 frames a second. And let's go for 10 seconds. Again, I'm going to go for um, standard resolution here and I'll click save. And I will come back in a moment when that animation is done. Let's just call this walkthrough. Right click and spell check by the way. Click save. Okay, see you in a moment when that's done. So here you can see the final animation that took a few minutes to render, um, but generally it's a lot easier now to set up path-based animations of your models. Okay, so another really, really lovely new feature is some of the RenderWorks 2020 improvements. Let's say, as well as talking about the speed and general fluidity of the 3D, um, what we can do is basically model and work in much faster sort of mode because basically the new RenderWorks takes advantage of multi-threaded geometry phase during the RenderWorks rendering. So this makes the scene very quick once the initial geometry is loaded in order to work. Let me see if I can demonstrate what I mean. So I'm going to go to one of my save views. Um, let's go to the living room. And you can see I'm going to get my walkthrough tool. Let's go to my visualization palette, get my walkthrough tool. And let's have a little pan around. And you can see as everything's very nice and smooth. If I go to my walkthrough tool, I can kind of walk through a little bit up to this table maybe. Uh, let's have a little look around this view. Yep, lovely. That's nice. Okay, so I'm going to go to my resources, Command R, and pop that open. And basically, I'm going to double click to access uh, one of the objects from the resources manager. I like this light. So I'm going to click OK. And you'll notice immediately it's going to be placed into the scene. Um, basically, it doesn't actually block any of the rendering, and it just immediately appears. So previously, this would have taken a lot longer. Um, let's go and see if I can search for some kitchen units or kitchen stuff. Okay, let's go for this. Let's have a pot on the uh, top here. Just add a little bit more detail. And you can see it just immediately appears and it doesn't really slow anything else down. Now you're going to find that a lot with basically things like selecting textures as well. Um, so really, really pleased about the new non-blocking um, sort of multi-core, multi-threaded rendering opportunities that RenderWorks is offering. And I think that's another very great new feature. Okay, everybody. Well, thanks for watching the uh, first part of my Vector 2020 new features video. I really enjoyed making this and I hope you like some of the new features. We'll be back with some other videos shortly um, to focus on some of the more in-deep workflow uh, improvements and BIM improvements and stuff. So there's a whole load of extra new stuff. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this first video and we'd love to see you subscribe to the channel. Please do drop a few comments and questions and I'll be very pleased to do my best to answer those. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.